Students, till now we have seen all the uh, diseases, their causative agents, their symptoms and all. So now we will see the prevention and control of diseases. So how exactly to control these diseases, how to prevent the diseases and their causative agents. So we will make a note of it. Okay. So first one in the prevention and control of diseases is maintenance of hygiene. What is hygiene? Hygiene means a very clean environment, okay? A clear, a clean uh, environment is called as hygienic environment. So what has to be kept clean? So first one is uh, what is needed is you will have to keep your body clean. So since childhood we have learned, so tw uh, twice you will have to take bath, so take bath regularly. So keep your teeth clean, keep your neat, uh, neatly trimmed nails. So these are all the uh, rules which are to be followed in order to keep ourselves far from diseases. So one's body have to be kept very clean. So in order uh, to keep away the causative agents of any kind of diseases. Okay, so uh, clean drinking water. One has to consume very clean drinking water only. Okay, no, or not uh, stagnant water or not any unclean kind of water. So we will have to consume very clean uh, water. Next, uh, eat clean food, not contaminated one, vegetables as well as fruits. So you will have to wash the vegetables and fruits properly before eating. You will have to uh, see whether the food has been spoiled or not. So these are the necessary measures which you will have to take. Next, proper waste disposal. So what are the waste we come across in our daily life? Maybe kitchen waste, maybe the excreta, human excreta, your uh, pet excreta, maybe animal excreta, bird excreta. So these are all the waste which we come across daily. So you will have to maintain them well. You will have to ma manage them. Well, so proper waste disposal have to be practiced. Okay. Next, periodic cleaning of pools, reservoirs and tanks. So, every uh, time you will have to clean the tanks because the tanks uh, are the ones which safeguard the water for you. Right. So, periodic cleaning of the tank with the chlorine treatment or the bleaching powder is very much necessary to keep oneself uh, safe. Next, for airborne diseases, so, keep distance from the infected person and his belongings. So, uh, airborne diseases means the ones which spread through cough or sneezing or the draw liquid droplets. So, these are the airborne diseases through the air which uh, transmits are called as the airborne diseases. So, what you will have to do? If you know that person is infected, you will have to uh, keep a distance. Whatever we speak now, social distancing, that is very much important Okay, to safeguard oneself. Next, uh, not only infected person, but also his belongings. So, what are his belongings? His belongings may be clothes, may be comb, may be razor machines, may be utensils, may be the door knobs, so may be mobile phones. So, these are all the ones to be kept away from the infected person. So, you should not use the belongings of the infected person. So, this is also very much needed. Next, for vector borne diseases, so vectors are carriers, right? So malaria, and amoebiosis, so these are the examples for vector borne diseases. House flies, mosquitoes, I told you, various insects uh, are the carriers of the diseases. So for them, what you have to do? So first is control and eliminate the vectors. So you will have to control the vectors. So controlling is uh, you will have to see where it exactly breeds and you will have to eliminate their breeding places or you will have to kill their larvae. So this is a, a very good uh, measure which you can take to keep away the vector borne diseases. Okay. So avoid stagnation of water. So what is stagnation of water? So water will be kept constantly in a single place for a longer period of time. So this is called as stagnation of water. So it will uh, cause a coloration of water. So greenish color will be formed because of the formation of algae in that and n number of bacteria uh, will grow in that which causes the diseases. So usually in the tender coconut uh, and all, uh, the shells of coconut and all, the stagnant water can be seen. So you will have to avoid the uh, stagnation of water should be avoided. Next, use the mosquito nets and meshes. So usually we do while we sleep, right? So we use the mosquito nets in and around us so that uh, the mosquitoes are kept away. 
away from us. So these are the this is the best method which we can practice to keep away the mosquitoes, which are the vectors of many diseases. And use the meshes. So where are the meshes used? Meshes are used uh, used in the uh, windows as well as the ventilators. So if you keep the mesh, is nothing but a thin wires, right? So the, it has to be closed and which will provide the ventilation also, which will avoid the vectors also. So these are the practices which you can practice to keep yourself away from vector-borne diseases. Next one is uh, introduce fishes like Gambusia in uh, ponds. So introduce the fishes like Gambusia in ponds. So this is one of the very important fish species that is uh, Gambusia. So remember, so why to introduce Gambusia in the ponds now? So this Gambusia is also called as mosquito fish. It's called as mosquito fish. Why? Because it lives in a fresh water that is a pond uh, and it will eat on the mosquito larvae. So mosquito larvae is the food of the fish species Gambusia. Understood? That is why it is called as mosquito fish. Now you will have to introduce such fishes into the pond. Now what happens? The breeding place of mosquito is the pond itself, the water body itself. So when you leave these Gambusia fishes there, no more mosquito larvae will be there. All the larvae will be eaten up by the uh, Gambusia fish. So this is very important. It will be asked for meat also. Okay. Next, the spray of insecticides. So, you can spray insecticides in swamps or marshes or wherever, drainages and all. So, you can uh, spray these insecticides. Again, it will cause uh, for poor quality of soil. That is a matter apart here. So, to keep the uh, insects away, you will have to spray the insecticides. Okay. Next one is vaccines and immunization controls many diseases like smallpox, diphtheria, polio, pneumonia, tetanus. So these are the diseases which can be controlled by in, uh, introducing the vaccine and immunizing a person. So what is vaccine? The half killed or purely killed microorganisms will be given in the form of injections and that is called as vaccine or vaccination. And what is immunization? So once you are given with the vaccine, so for a longer period of time, your body will be resistant to that particular uh, microorganism causing disease. So that is called as immunization. Okay. So you will be given uh, the vaccine in the form of injection. And it will keep away the diseases like smallpox, diphtheria. Diphtheria means whooping cough, right? Uh, diphtheria, polio, pneumonia and tetanus. So these are the diseases which can be kept away by vaccination. Okay students, I had uh, told you in the last class that uh, for us to be healthy, three systems are very much needed. So which are the three systems? One is neural system, one is endocrine system and the one is immune system. Correct? So now what is the main role of this immune system? So immune system fights against the pathogens, the microorganisms or the foreign agents. Correct? Whichever enter into our body, they properly fight against them. So there will be a war between the foreign agent and as well as the immune system of our body. Correct? So that is what we are learning in the next topic that is immune Immunity. Okay, so what is immunity by definition we will see. So the overall ability of the body to fight against disease causing microorganisms with the help of immune system is called as immunity. So immunity is that power which resides inside the body of the organisms which is able to fight against the foreign agents or foreign bodies. Understood? So along with the help of immune system. So the overall ability of the body, the ability or the power of the body to fight against the disease causing microorganisms is called as immunity. Okay, so here immune system plays a very important role in providing immunity. Fine. So there are two types of immunity. So the two types of immunity are innate immunity and acquired immunity. So innate means what? 
by birth okay acquired means that which is acquired later fine so innate immunity is that kind of immunity which occurs by birth so when a child is born that uh, immunity will be there during the child birth itself that kind of immunity is called as innate immunity fine so and second one is the acquired immunity so what is acquired immunity it develops during the lifetime by the exposure to suitable foreign agents like microorganisms so in the later days so that uh, immunity will be acquired externally so once the child is born it will have an innate immunity and when uh, throughout the lifespan of the uh, organism so it will be a child it will become a adolescent it will become a youth it will become a adult right so all these uh, during these phases whatever immunity is acquired externally that immunity is called as acquired immunity hope it is clear okay now we will see innate immunity in detail fine so innate immunity will have four types of barriers so while a child is born itself so these four barriers will be there in the child so which are the four barriers we will see this is a very important question it will be asked for Two marks, three marks, as well as the five marks. So wherever they can ask, so they can ask either any one type of immunity for two marks, or they can club two for two mark, uh, three marks, or a uh, whole will be asked for five marks. So this is very important along with the definition. Fine. Okay. So first barrier is the physical barrier. So physical means externally what barriers are there. So that is called as physical barrier. Understood. So we will see the skin. So first uh, is the skin, and second one is the mucus coating. Okay. So these two serve as the physical barriers in the innate immunity. Understood. So uh, first one is the skin. So skin is called as first line of defense. what is defense defense means protection correct so skin is called as first line of defense because when an organism is there so what is exposed first first will be exposed the skin right so that that is why the skin is a first line of defense so skin is one of the physical barrier which will keep away the microorganisms from entering into the body understood second one is mucus coating of epithelial lining of respiratory a uh, system gastrointestinal system and urinogenital tracts understood so the mucus will be there in the epithelial lining so epithelial lining of respiratory system right so uh, starting from the nose you will have epithelial cells in the nose uh, as well as the windpipe and the gastrointestinal tract starting from the throat esophagus so there it starts and urinogenital tract in the uh, internal organs right so all these places you can see a sticky thing that is the mucus will be seen so in the epithelial lining so if there will be a mucus the uh, the sticky thing so that will help to keep away the microorganisms or the foreign bodies whatever enter see so if something enters into a, your nose so you start sneezing why is that so there causes irritation in the epithelial cells and you try to put out the things out understood so that is what uh, is uh, mucus coating of epithelial lining of respiratory tract gastrointestinal tract and urinogenital tract so there are two types of physical barriers first is the skin second is the mucus uh, coating which is in the epithelial lining of these three tracts fine so this is the physical barrier so the next barrier is physiological barrier so you have learnt physiology correct so uh, digestion uh, digestive system respiratory system so these are all the various physiological processes which take place in the individual or a living organism so while uh, we see the second barrier that is physiological barrier which are the ones you can expect so the first one is acid in the stomach so which acid is present in the stomach hcl is present you have already learned it in the previous year right so acid in the stomach saliva in the mouth tears from the eyes 
see whenever something enters to your eye what happens you start tearing right so what is that process it is uh, to put out that foreign agent or foreign body so you uh, suddenly close your eyes and you start tearing so that is a process that is nothing but a physiological barrier understood so acid in the stomach so why is there acid in the stomach why is there saliva in the mouth why is there tears in your ears so they also have secondary functions so uh, acid will help in digestion saliva will help in moistening of the food and tears will help in keeping the eyes moist understood these are the secondary functions of the uh, all organs understood or these acid saliva and tears so now uh, with regard to physiological barrier what is the function of uh, acid in the stomach saliva in the mouth and tears from the eyes all keep the microorganisms away or the foreign agents away understood so this is the uh, main function and this is the physiological barrier examples fine third barrier is uh, cellular barrier cellular means with regard to cells so there will be uh, some cells uh, which act as a barrier so which are they so which come in the immune system mainly which are the fighters the fighters are the wbcs right white blood corpuscles so here wbcs like so wbcs are also called as leukocytes right so they are also called as leukocytes okay so they are called as leukocytes so leukocytes like pmnl that is polymorphonuclear leukocytes monocytes natural killer cells and macrophages so these are all the ones which are there in our body to keep away the microorganisms now where exactly these are present if you see where is wbc present wbc is present in the blood correct where well, it is one of the component of blood so these cells pmnl cells that is polymorphonuclear leukocytes monocytes and natural killer cells so these Ah, uh, these three are present in the blood. Okay, they are present in the blood. And what about the macrophages? Macrophages are present in the tissues. What are tissues? Tissues are group of cells coming together to form a specialized function. They are called as tissues. Correct? You know that already. So these macrophages uh, will be there in the tissues. And what do they do? How do they act as a barrier? So if you ask me this, so these all have the ability of phagocytosis. So you might have uh, heard phagocytosis. Phagocytosis means what? It is engulfing process, engulfing the foreign particles. So that is called as phagocytosis. So these all the cells, cellular barrier are nothing but they come contain cells. Okay, so these cells are able of phagocytosis and they destroy the microorganisms. So whichever comes through uh, to the body, they will pass the skin layer, they will pass the mucus layer, they will pass all these lines of defense and when they enter into the blood or when they enter into the tissue, who will be waiting? The cellular barriers will be there. So these all kind of cells, they will phagocytose the microorganisms, thus keeping you safe. Understood? So the last kind of barrier is cytokine barrier. So cytokine barrier is the last type of barrier of innate immunity. Fine. So you are learning under the heading innate immunity. So what are these cytokine barriers? So virus infected cells secrete interferon proteins which protect non-infected cells from further viral infection. So see here, so these are the cells which are there in a particular organ. You think so. Now a virus comes and infects one cell. Understood? So virus is infecting one cell. Rapidly what happens? The next cell will be infected. The next cell will be infected. That time these cells which are already infected by the virus, they will secrete a protein and that protein is called as interferon. Don't, do not forget this. So this is produced by virus infected protein. So what is interferon? So virus, uh, virus infected cell. So what is interferon? They are nothing but proteins. Understood? So they are basically proteins which are secreted by virus infected cells. And what do they do? They will stop further infection.
infection of virus to the non infected cell so that the further next cell the next cell will not be infected by the virus so that is the function of this particular interferon protein so that acts as a cytokine barrier understood so this is very important so the virus infected cells will secrete a protein called as interferon which will stop the further cells from infection of virus so this is the uh, cytokine barrier